talk about um, Sarah Andrews and how she's just continued to be a spark plug for you guys, uh, another 20-point performance? Yeah, I thought early she was um, really unaggressive, um, you know, not playing downhill and and uh, you know, I, I took her out and kind of challenged her. And I thought when she went back in the game, she was a, a big catalyst for us um, playing downhill. You know, we put in a two, new out of bounds action. She hit a two threes off of it, um, you know, and I, and I thought she was getting to the rim. Um, thought she was also getting fouled going to the rim, but um, she didn't seem to have any free throws tonight. So, um, but you know, I, I just, I thought for the most part, you know, once she came back in the game, I thought she was really, really good. Talk about the team's effort closing the first half on a 16-1 to run, and what was the message to the team in the locker room? That I didn't care how many minutes you'd played at Baylor or what year or what class, um, that if you were going to be in the game, you had to play hard or you were going to come out of the game. And, you know, I thought, um, you know, our bench, um, some kids that haven't played a lot of minutes, but I thought our bench came in and played hard. And, um, you know, it was about starting the third quarter, how we ended the second. I thought we got, you know, some good minutes from Asia. Haven't seen her in a long time. And and uh, it's probably a long road back to think we're going to get, you know, the Asia that we had the first, you know, month of the season before her in injury. But um, I thought she gave us a spark um, there at the end. And, and I thought we opened the, the third quarter um, well. Um, and then... And then not so much there for a while. The uh, fourth quarter shooting for you guys, obviously, is probably what's going to stand out on the box score. But it looked like you guys were getting good looks, you know, running pretty good offense. Is it just a matter of you know, being on the road and sometimes those shots just don't go in? Or, or what did you see there? Um, yeah, I mean, Jamie didn't make shots all night. So, you know, I don't know that it was fourth quarter. It was for her. It was all game long. And, and she's a really, really good shooter. And so, um, you know, with Jamie, I always believe the next one's going in. And, um, you know, but obviously between Jamie and Jaden, um, you know, they just, they just didn't have any offensive production tonight, and that hurt us. Um, we're not a team. Um, we are not a team that's good when we have one big score. We're just not. I mean, that's not who we are. Um, you know, we don't, we don't have Melissa Smith anymore. So we're at our best when we're sharing the ball, when we're assisting on our baskets, like even 14 assists on 24 baskets, that's not good for us, not for us. Um, you know, and so, you know, a lot of that is, was missed shots. You know, if we're driving and we're kicking and we're making the extra pass and we're missing open shots, um, you know, we, we certainly need to make some of those open shots um, that we miss, but um, you know, I, I thought at times we just didn't play downhill, you know, well enough against them. Again, you know, they they were better playing downhill um, in the ball screen than we were. Talk about Zariana a little bit, sixth double double of the year, and just how she's continued to develop as a freshman on this team. Yeah, I thought um, she's been a little up and down. You know, I mean, she was. She struggled at OU and then played great at Kansas. Um, struggled a little against Oklahoma State and then really challenged her to rim run tonight, um, you know, and, and, and took her out early because I didn't think she was running as hard as she could. And she came back in the game and got a couple layups and, and got fouled in transition, made her free throws. She was the most active player we had on the offensive glass. Um, when you don't shoot the basketball very well, you got to go get extra possessions. And I thought she does a good job of pursuing the ball. Needs to understand, like, when she gets it, um, where she's at and, and, you know, not throw it to the other team. Um, but, but I think she played with a ton of energy. She was rolling, getting behind the defense, and then finishing. Um, so, you know, I, I just, you know, we, we kind of need that same kind of catapult at the beginning, though, um, in terms of her ability to be at oftentimes more athletic than the person guarding her. West Virginia started off hot with a few three pointers, got you guys in, into a pretty big hole. But then the second quarter, you, your team really flipped it around. What, what changed in the second quarter, and how important was that going into the third quarter when you guys also started pretty hot? Mm. I mean, I think some of our success in the second quarter was JJ Quinterly sitting on the bench. I mean, that helped. <laughs> um, you know, she's such a threat with the ball in her hands, playing downhill. Um, she's making threes. Um, so. That was some of it, um, you know. I think you play the law of averages with teams, 
and quite frankly, Hemingway and Blackstein and those guys just aren't statistically good three point shooters, you know, and and sometimes um it's fool's gold, like if you make an early one a little bit, you know, like um Blackston made that first one and then you know, and then she ended the half one for five from three. And so, you know, that's four possessions. She's not in the lane where she's bigger than us and longer than us. And and so in some ways, um, that can be a good thing. Now, she hit a huge one. You know, she hit a huge one in the second half. But you saw she only took one. And she took, like, you know, a, a dagger one as opposed to, like, kind of falling in love um, with a shot that's not your most efficient shot. But I thought Hemingway, um, you know, stuck a couple early and – I thought Hemingway was was a big catalyst for them in the first half, especially with, uh, especially in the first quarter. I thought she was really good. Um, she attacked us downhill. She got an offensive rebound. You know, was a mismatch um, challenge for us um, when we play smaller. And so, you know, we had to move move ma matchups around a little bit because of that. And. Uh, so, you know, I, I was proud of how we battled back. I mean, I was, I mean, obviously 20 to 10 second quarter, the run we were on, the run we took, you know, into the third quarter, but um, they got to be super proud of kind of how resilient they were. Like, I know she subbed four people at once looking for energy and, and she got it. You know, that group came in and, and did a little bit of what, when I put that second unit in, in the first half, like they, they gave them a lot of energy and juice and, and, uh, you know, those guys played better when they came back in. And, and they made more plays down the stretch than we did. We, we missed some execution stuff, um, even coming out of a timeout. And, um, you know, I'm someone that feels like we may not make every shot, but I'm pretty confident that I can diagram something that's going to get them a shot. Um, I don't, you know, like, and, and so when we don't execute an action and – and it looks bad, like, I'm pretty frustrated, you know, because I think most of the time, you know, we're going to get a shot. Um, we may not make it, um, but, you know, we just we just weren't very good from midway through the third, you know, kind of all the rest of the way. Coach, you mentioned I was going to ask you about Blackston. I mean, obviously, I mean, she did hit a couple threes, but, but uh, also did some, some stuff in the paint. Uh, did that force, I mean, all of a sudden, you know, usually when you see like an underdog maybe kind of play up a, a little bit, there's somebody maybe unexpected who, you know, kind of steps up and maybe that was kind of hurt. I'm just kind of well, I mean, certainly I think her and Hemingway both. I mean, Hemingway doubled, pretty much doubled her scoring average. Blackstein doubled, almost tripled her scoring average. I mean, when you look at, you know, it's like I, I, I probably talk way too much in these things. I... I, uh, you know, a lot of coaches are like, oh, we didn't play hard or we didn't do this or we, the reality is for them, wins versus losses, they lose when Quinterly and Smith have to do too much. You know, it's no different than Sarah had to do too much for us today. Like we're, they're at their best wins versus losses when those guys score less and everybody else scores more, you know, when, when the Hemingways and Blacksteins and Watsons and Nichols and those guys play above their scoring average, that's when this team is really dangerous because you know they're going to defend you really, really hard. And so when they get balanced scoring, then they can balance out the fact that you know they're going to get – that you know that she's going to defend. I mean, um, and her teams are going to defend. And so, um, you know, I just – I think both of them gave them a lift. I think we didn't do a good job. I mean, honestly, like – we didn't do a good job taking away Blackstein's left shoulder. Like that's you know, she she went over her left shoulder at will, and and we didn't sit on it. Uh, we didn't do a good enough job sitting on it, and um, you know, but she made she made big plays for them. I thought, you know, um, the three was as big a play in the second half as as any. You know, just when you're when you're holding teams off and you're trying to create separation, those are those are big moments, really big moments for teams, and you know that's 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 gonna probably like give her confidence for the next game it's amazing this game is so mental and you know you you have one game where you're knocking down shots and making plays and that just that feeds into the next it feeds into the next so Kansas State on Wednesday it's kind of a tight turnaround there but what do you have to do and work on to to come back out on top against Kansas State well Kansas State can shoot the three so we got to guard the arc better um you know um you know but they'll also Get you stretched out five out five you know five out and attack and.
play to mismatches. Gregory's a mismatch nightmare and, you know, has led the league in scoring. And so um, different kind of team, very different kind of team, but dangerous in a different way. And obviously West Virginia went in there and, and, and won there on the road, but, you know, took holding off a run. And, um, you know, this team, West Virginia team, like, I mean, it looks like they got blown out by OU, but it was one vintage OU run that beat them. Not, not the game, you know. It's a, it's diving on a ball that you're not going to get, and Taylor Robertson hitting a three to go into the end of the third, you know, go into the fourth quarter, and then Maddie Williams hits a three, and then OU starts smiling and celebrating, and before you know it, they they've gone on a 14-0 run, and and believe me, like we've seen them. So. Um, you know, I, I just think everybody in this league is good, and you better show up, you know, every night because there aren't any guarantees. Thank you. You're welcome.